In my line of work as an advisor, I may only have 15 minutes to an hour to meet with a client and profoundly change their lives or at least get them going on the right path. Hi, my name is Jessica and I'm a political scientist and spiritual advisor and today I am going to be sharing with you some of the challenges that some of my students have had and kind of explaining to you um, the it's philosophy's not boring. You probably just had a boring teacher, just to say it normally. There is um, so much profound wisdom in philosophy, and sometimes meeting with those clients, it just takes like one nugget of information to really trigger something within them that's helped them change. For example, um, a lot of times we'll be carrying around burdens that aren't even necessarily ours. Maybe you're, you're feeling this way right now, perhaps you're, you're worried about like two people, maybe not getting along or worried if this is going to happen, or obviously we have a lot going on. It's 2024 election year. And I'll, I might have to say to that person is, Hey, you have the option of not having an opinion on this. <sighs> and the shoulders relax <laughs> and it washes over them that feeling of like, oh yeah, I, I could just choose not to engage with this. So that is not all me. Um, a lot of times I'm just the vessel for that knowledge and it comes from my study of philosophy a lot of times. And so today we're going to be going over some common frustrations I hear and also some of my students and clients that are interested in like deep, deeper thought or want to know where I get the different wisdom I drop on them from. And I tell them it's philosophy and their eyes glaze over and it's like, oh no, that's scary. And it doesn't have to be scary. So, and also, um, I normally have a book if you see any other of my videos, but today I'm just kind of, we're going to be storytelling more or less. I should also say that philosophy itself is love of wisdom. And I know you love wisdom because you clicked on this video and I hope you'll subscribe and like it because it's super fun around here. I promise. <laughs> okay, let's get started. One of the first frustrations that I hear is the complexity of the text themselves. And this is very valid. You may have heard of uh, the phrase, it's all Greek to me. It's because a lot of the stuff was written in Greek and or Latin, and it can be difficult to get a good translation. Or like I said a minute ago, if it's being translated through a teacher that is not engaging and is just getting garbled, hopefully I'm not garbled or out of whack, but um, that can be a common frustration of that. And I have an example too um, with the translations. Um, there is some books out there that have attempted to make it more palatable, the study of philosophy. And this book, as a, this was a gift, I have to mention, from my dear client and friend. And it is Pla oh, Plato and a Platypus Walk into a Bar. So it's like a fun little cheeky title and stuff like that. And those are fine. Uh, I could see how something that was more entertaining like that could really engage people who maybe not don't know. But the issue with books like that, and I'm not criticizing the gift at all, and it's actually a really cool gift for someone who is a nerd like me and likes philosophy. But if you were just reading that alone and doesn't have the context for some of it, then I could see how it could be misinterpreted. And not only that, um, when you get into books like that, and that one for is just as guilty, but it does start to get more on the political side or more drawing a conclusion and philosophy itself needs to be studying about values and morals and not necessarily drawing to a conclusion. So 
those books have their place, but if you are just looking for translations and things like that, I do have other recommendations, and there's tons out there. Um, you may recognize this from another <laughs> video I've done on this. This is uh, the Emperor's Handbook, and you may have heard this guy, Marcus Aurelius. He's full of cool knowledge. If you stay tuned this channel, I'll fill you in, but I just wanted to mention that the original uh, text for this was written about 171 BC. So obviously it's going to be difficult to uh, read that <laughs> and understand the language of it. But this uh, was retitled The Emperor's Handbook and it's a great translation of it. Um, pretty clear language and like, like you're going to read that. But yeah, <laughs> easy to read on that. So more or less having a good teacher and that's what I try to do. I try to not dump all the inner workings of all the technicals of philosophy on some of my students. I, I would rather them take away one part of it versus get frustrated by trying to learn the whole part of it and then just throwing it aside and learning nothing. So, you know, small wins where you can, right? Um, the second uh, frustration that I see when studying philosophy is the the abstract concepts that <laughs> you're being asked to learn because it's not just it's very layered thinking again we're building wisdom so it's not going to be a, a simple thought process and and we'll get into like i do have another video planned for reasons you'd want to learn philosophy and um we will definitely get into that but i will say as far as those more the benefits of learning those more complex thoughts of that really come in when you're looking at the political world or like middle, military strategy. I do have a video on um, art of war and it kind of goes through that. So it's, that's actually a good example of that. Um, so that would be making it relatable in a lot of different ways. Um, that's what I try to do as a teacher, like I said, because some of those in the weed concepts from the art of war seem irrelevant. But if you are looking at the, um, how do I say, the actual idea versus the language versus the scenario, that's when you can apply them to your lives. And that's when you can get a lot of benefit from that. Uh, also, and, and Rolling into that, there's a lot of question. I know like this was one of my frustrations when I was studying this in university. I'm going to be real with you. I kind of had a hard time studying it because it was not relatable and no hate to my teacher, but also it, he was Irish. So I couldn't understand like half the stuff he was saying. So it just made it that more frustrating. I'm just being transparent, just being real with you guys. But as far as if I were to say to a new student how you could actually apply philosophy, I think uh, some of the greatest examples are some of the more successful, famous people um, that you already know. Um, for example, one of my favorites is something on fire. Jesus, got that fire bug aesthetic going. Let's try this with the better vessel. Now, two of my favorite examples when it comes to modern day philosophers are number one, the late, great Kobe Bryant, RIP Kobe. Um, he is amazing as far, when you actually look at his dedication to his craft, but not only that, but where he was mentally in order to uh, achieve the greatness that he did during his life. And um, he calls it Mamba Mentality. I would totally suggest looking up on YouTube. Um, one of my favorites from him is Booze Don't Stop Dunks. That's right, kids. That is if you are working at your craft and you are sinking the basketball, if you are dunking on them, boo, let them boo. It's okay. Okay. Another great... Um, person that I've found a lot from their um, just their talks on YouTube as well is Terry Crews, the actor. I have gotten so much um, from, his, uh, it was one of his, his talks he did, and he said he got where he is with acting, with where he was in life, just by showing up. 
just showing up and being present and being in a good attitude. There was movies, that, sets that he was on um, where he had maybe a small part in it and he could have just said, okay, I only have a small part in this. I'm going to put in this amount of effort to what it's worth. But he did not do that. He went in there and said, I'm going to put full effort into this. I'm going to make this role my own. I'm going to um, put as much, I guess, like care and attention towards this as I possibly can and just show up for what I've been asked to do. And that led him to even more screen time, more roles, more recognition, uh, just from having that attitude. And that's the kind of um, lessons we can learn from philosophy because it is teaching what's called mental fortitude, where you're building your mind as a fortress and accomplishing those goals in order for the goal of better living. So am I selling it yet? Is it working? Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the other thing that is a challenge for, I'm making sure all my notes are in here. Um, a frustration that I see is the often opposing views you may get when you're trying to study philosophy or you're trying to understand that deeper wisdom. You're going to have some philosophers that say this and some that say that and just all these diverse opinions that can really throw people for a loop. And <laughs> my only suggestion is get over it. We see this a whole lot in modern society too, where it's just like people have a hard time having conversations with other people that think different from them ideologically. And if you are able to break that down, like I was saying a moment ago, to just values and morals and having that um, discussion of that and really getting a deeper understanding of what are my values and morals, where's this person coming from with theirs, and even the different philosophers are going to come from different eras, different countries, um, the Eastern and Western school of thought, how they bleed over into each other and creates this weird amalgamation. Um, it's going to be a journey <laughs> that you really, if you're going to start searching for this kind of wisdom, if you're going to look for different philosophers, you have to keep a, um, not necessarily an open mind, but a flexible in a way, being, being able to hear other people's opinions and consider them, uh, and, and really question yourself. And that's why the know thyself is one of the most commonly referred to phrases in philosophy or knowing yourself very deeply as well. Um, the other part of this, and it's not as much since we have the internet now, but it, <laughs> um, it can be very isolating if you are the only one within your circle that is having deep thoughts, that is wanting to discuss this, that's actually wondering, like, you know, Amor Fati, what, what that means, like, I accept my fate. And actually that goes, hold on, that goes back to the original quote I was telling you as well of you can choose not to have an opinion because things just are a lot of times and we could choose how we act to them. We can choose if we are hung up on them emotionally or mentally, how that's going on for us. But um, not having anyone to discuss this with has stopped a lot of people from diving deeper into philosophy. So here's your space to do so. Please subscribe if you do want to have that community and we can talk all this stuff together and kind of do practical application of philosophy because really that's that's what this channel's uh, aim is. And I also had, um, you can go look back in the history if you'd like, I also had a crystal shop, metaphysical shop, where I saw clients there and it was really like the gift shop to my philosophy school. So I try to create a community through that. Stuff happens. Here we are talking about it now. And this is um, a wrap up of those frustrations. And like I said, the next video I will have is going to be reasons you 
would want to study philosophy. And if you're still here, let me tell you about some other cool stuff I have coming up. The, like I said, the reason for me going into these deeper philosophy videos and everything is because I do have a lot going on. I'm able to help clients. I'm going to be, um, one of the next projects I have coming up is an event with the Stars Foundation for World Orphan Day, and I'll be interviewing 30 different uh, first ladies from African nations. <laughs> and I also uh, help produce a, a TV show, can't even talk, a talk show <laughs> called Bless Your Heart and do different hosting on that. And I'm doing all these different things. And the reason I'm telling you about philosophy and I'm doing this right now is to tell you how I do those things. It's up here. It's a mentality, mostly. And I would love to share that with you. And if you want to keep with us on this journey on diving deeper into that, if you want to see some cool stuff, of course, I'm going to have some more behind the scenes footage of Bless Your Heart. And of course, I'll be documenting my uh, when I'll be hosting World Orphan Day Foundation and lots of other cool stuff. So thank you for watching today. Mwah. Be nice to each other. Bye.